And if you just watch the stream I did yesterday on Twitch, I was trying to install my developer tools on Manjaro Linux. And as you can see clearly there, if you were actually following me, um, you may realize that I'm not really good um, managing my uh, frustration, let's call it like that. Yeah. So I failed miserably trying to uh, use Manjaro to my advantage there, and I got really frustrated. And that's one of the things that I, I'm currently working on, because as many people, because uh, that's a thing that humans tend to do, uh, when we get frustrated trying to do something and we fail, we just mm, have one of two options. Uh, the first one is to just leave it as it is and say, well, it's maybe not worth it anyway. And that was the option that I chose at the time. And the next one is to, well, uh, the second option would be to maybe I just need to invest even more time, more resources into this to make it work. So the thing is that when you are young, you you feel like you have a lot of time in your hands and you then that may be an illusion that may be uh the wrong thing to to think actually people don't really have that much time in their hands even when they're young so anyway the thing is that uh at the time at this time i really need to think really hard before committing more time and resources into a project. So I need to choose carefully because if I fail, that means that the time and effort and resources that I already committed to the cause, uh, they're, they are just wasted if I don't get the desired result. Um, in that specific case, if I didn't manage to install my developer tools correctly in Manjaro, and I didn't get them to, to compile a program and run it, um, that's basically a fail in my part. I'm pretty sure that I did uh, a lot of things wrong that day. So the real question is, if I actually believe that it's actually worth, it's actually worth it to try to rescue my Manjaro installation um, the software required for me to begin working on the actual work that is uh, programming. And the answer at the time was no, it, it is not worth it because I already know that I can get to the starting line using Ubuntu. And my conclusion that day was to just uh, leave it for today and the next day I should just um, download the the recent um, uh, Ubuntu ISO uh, install it inside a USB and just uh, go with it because I already have a lot of experience with it. So uh, today, uh, during my work day, I got um, I got a lot of work to do, by the way, but never mind that. Um, during my break, um, I learned about a programming language called uh, Go from Google. Um, it's called Go, or some people call it Golang. And I actually believe that it's really interesting. I think it's interesting that compiled languages keep coming by. And this one seems pretty promising. Is uh, Go is actually addressing the problem of multi-platform very well. Um, I did watch a couple of YouTube videos and tutorials and presentations about Go. And I actually see, in theory, in those videos, that it's actually really easy to just install um, the, the compiler, the, the program, the compiler, uh, type uh, a simple hello world program and compile the code for your, for your platform and just execute it. I watch, um, I watch in, in a tutorial how to compile for Windows 32 bit. Yes, that's a thing. Uh, Windows 10 for Linux, obviously. 
and for even for Darwin, and that's the code name for Mac OS, I believe. So you are not limited by the platform you are planning to use. You may actually be um, be working on a Linux distribution and create the binaries to execute in any other platform. So it's really flexible, unlike C and C++, or even C Sharp, um, considering that you need the right .NET executable install in order to execute your program. But never mind that. Uh, getting back to the frustration issue I, uh, that I got. So my plan for tomorrow is going to be to install um, the Ubuntu desktop. I'm going to be recording that also. And proceed to install my Visual Studio Code, I believe, Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Uh, and I planning to install also Data Grip from JetBrains and IntelliJ IDEA for Java. Right now, I'm, I'm holding on with Java. I am stopping my learning process there because I do realize that Java is a very, uh, is a very large target and it's taking me way too much time just to get the basic of it. I already have invested around a year just focusing on the basics of Java and um, there is a lot of ground to cover and every version that comes by increases the, the things that I need to learn and the difficulty of those things increase also. So um, the promise of Golang uh, from Google is that it's a very simple programming language to learn. Um, it is designed from the ground up to address uh, multi-core processing. So multi-trading programs are, ba are pretty much uh, its forte. So I don't really know exactly how does it do it. Um, and that's going to be a surprise, I guess. Uh, in my, what I'm looking for in Go is um, basically one thing and one thing only that I can actually uh, run that on a server, no matter the architecture, no matter the platform. It may be a Windows server, uh, a Linux server, even a, a FreeBSD server, even a Mac OS. So the promise of being able to run Golang in any platform uh, that's what is uh, actually uh, being very attracted to me. So that's actually the uh, the main point why I decided to learn how to program in Java. Because the promise of Java is uh, as long as you have installed the virtual machine for your platform, you are able to run your bytecode there. So multi-platform, a single source code, uh, that's the promise. So that's what I'm looking for. And the next thing that, that I need from Go is that I'm, is that if Go can allow me to manage to create, copy, and move files, and uh, the last thing will be uh, database connectivity and recovering of information from databases, and obviously inserting database. So basically what I want to do is create programs uh, for data mining mainly and database work because that's what I do. I am a database uh, administrator. And I find in Java a really useful tool to manage a great amount of data. In my company where I work, um, the .NET developers are used to store files inside fields, inside tables. Uh, what they do is to store the binary data inside a blob field. Uh, a blob field means a very large object uh, binary, I think. So they basically use a field inside a table to store their, their, their files. They don't use the file system for files. So yeah, I know it's, it's really weird. Uh, but never mind that. So with Java, I am able to extract the picture from the fields and 
load them as pictures inside the Java application. And even though I'm using a command line application, I don't really, um, uh, I don't really see, um, how Java interacts with the actual picture. Uh, yet, uh, with the use of some basic libraries, I am able to extract the picture, to resize the picture. In, in, I do that in, ca in the case that the picture is actually bigger, uh, than, cer than a certain amount of size. So, if the picture is uh, a little bigger, uh, than the limit, I need to resize the picture and, and store it again inside the field. So, that's a job that I cannot do, or, or, or I don't know if it is, if I can actually do that, uh, resize a picture inside a blood field directly using Transact SQL from Microsoft. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, never mind that. I am able to do all that, the resizing of the pictures using Java. So, if and only if Golang can provide me with the tools to uh, to download a picture from a blood field inside a table on a database, open load the picture on RAM, resize the picture, and then upload it again on a on a database field, I think I'm sold. So I'm going to be doing a little research before committing myself. Uh, with time, effort, and money, because to be honest, uh, even though there are a lot of free tutorials on YouTube, the truth is that if you really want to go fast and save yourself time, and uh, you, I would rather pay thirty bucks, thirty dollars, fifteen dollars for a book, and if the book is going to speed up my learning curve. I, I think that $30 is worth it. So the first thing I need to know if is Golang is going to deliver what I need. If that's true, then I guess uh, Golang is going to be my project from here uh, for the next three months at least. So yeah, well, I say that about Java last year and a year later, uh, I am still learning the basic of Java. So things that I, uh, that I already managed very well, I guess, is, uh, the, the basics of class implementations, how to create a class, how to inherit a class, polymorphism. Uh, that's basically, it's a cute name for, um, creating several methods with the same name that, um, that do different things and require different uh, list of parameters, uh, but never mind that. Um, what else? Exception, exception handling. That's basically when the program uh, uh, creates a mis uh, makes a mistake, or or I try to open a file and the file doesn't exist. It's going to create an exception there. It's going to throw an exception. So how to manage exceptions? How to create custom exceptions? I already um, I already doing that. How to read and write files into network devices and file system in general. What else? Uh, obviously, how uh, database connectivity. Uh, at least with Microsoft SQL Server, using the the official Microsoft JDBC driver. What else? Um, I try to learn generics yet. The video courses on plural site, there is just one. And I, I find myself struggling to understand it. I don't know if it's me or, or if the course is not really clear about it. Um, I still don't really get, uh, how generics are supposed to be working. Well, never mind that. Uh, collections, I do manage that very well, I guess, because pretty much collections already exist. So I only need to implement, uh, to use them, not even implement them. Uh, interfaces are, they are a really useful, um, alternative to inheritance. So they are very flexible. They allow me to implement them inside several, uh, different classes. 
and those classes don't really need to be um, rel uh, related to each other via uh, inheritance. So, okay, so a lot, a lot of things that I've been learning uh, through my fifth year learning Java. Yet the truth is that all that is just the basics, uh, and uh, and there is a lot of work to be done. Uh, concurrency, for example, that's uh, one of the hardest things that I encounter inside Java. Uh, I just struggle to complete the, the simplest tutorial for that. And it's a really hard subject for me, co concurrency. It's a very powerful tool, uh, I may add, because in my case, in my company server, we do have, uh, I believe it's a, a 16 core server. Uh, we do have a, a couple of chips. So in total, we do have two chips with eight cores in, in a single motherboard for the server. So I do understand that I can execute my code, create 16 different uh, threads, and let them do their own thing. Uh, I did try to do uh, the image processing, and I have to say that I, I was really impressed from the two to three hours that it took the machine to to open, resize the, the pictures and store them again on the on the database to merely three minutes uh, with with concurrency, I was really impressed. So uh, tools, tools everywhere. So my initial intention learning Java was to initially to create my own Android apps. Uh, that was my ambition before Kotlin uh, came into the picture from Google. When Kotlin came, Java was uh, pushed away. So yeah, and I wasn't learning Java at the time when Kotlin came out. And I already knew that just like uh, in the case of Apple Swift, um, Objective C was condemned to die. So it was just a matter of time. And I was uh, seeing the same thing happening uh, with Java on the Android platform. So basically, if I really want to get back to Android development, I don't think that I'm going to be working with Java. I, I guess I'm going to be uh, learning Kotlin later. Uh, at this time, I believe that my focus should be my own, my, my day job. And learn tools that allow me to to free myself from the database tasks from the day to day. So, getting back to go, uh, it is go it's going to be my task for tomorrow to do some research and take a decision about Go. If I going to learn it, I f I need to do some research and see what sources are required for me to get into to speed up my learning process because I'm not going to spend the next two to three years learning from tutorials uh, very slowly. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get books. I'm going to get video courses, lynda.com, Pluralsight, whatever it takes. I'm going to commit my money and time for that. Uh, in exchange, I'm expecting to speed of the process of learning Golang. And right after that, I'm going to rewrite a lot of projects that I already um, had working on Java in my job so I can uh, uh, recreate them using Go. So, well, that's the plan anyway. Thank you for coming in and listening to my rambling. I do promise, uh, and I hope to uh, that someone actually uh, sends a comment on the platform I'm using. It's called Anchor. I do believe that you can actually leave their uh, voice comments. You can leave recordings there uh, that I'm going to be glad to hear. and Or you can actually hit me on my Twitter account. I am at Twitter on Jorge Escobar. I'm going to be leaving my Twitter handle on the description. Uh, whatever. So thank you for coming in again and see you tomorrow to see what I'm doing there. So bye-bye.